So, today I'm going to be talking about rabbits and how you're probably drawing them wrong, or writing them wrong, or getting vital information about them wrong. Okay, that's a little bit on the nose, but to be fair, I do see a lot of people getting things about rabbits so wildly wrong that it has gotten to a point that I made an entire list of stuff about rabbit information and handling and just all sorts of stuff about rabbits and hopefully this is helpful and this will help you draw rabbits better and get less stuff wrong about them because you'd be surprised how much people who spend literally years working on projects involving rabbits they're getting stuff wrong about the rabbits, even though they research them extensively for these projects, and I'll give some examples of that later. But for now, we're going to start off talking about rabbit anatomy. And the first thing that I want to point out, because this is one of my biggest pet peeves when I see people, like, you know, drawing rabbits or anything like that, is that rabbits don't have paw pads. You know how cats and dogs and many creatures have the cute little pink beans on the bottom of their feet and stuff like that? They're like built-in non-stick grips and rabbits don't have those. Rabbits have completely furry feet. They are completely covered in fur and this is to make them more sensitive to their surroundings because they are a prey animal. They can feel vibrations better and whatnot and since they live most of their lives on dirt and grass and whatnot they don't need to be as, you know, non-slippy if that makes sense. However, for domesticated rabbits and rabbits who are in industrialized places and houses and things like that, this can be an issue for like walking on hardwood floors and concrete and stuff like that. Because for example, my rabbit, um, he usually spends his time sitting on the rugs, but sometimes he'll wander onto the hardwood floor or onto some concrete or something. And he'll just go sliding for probably a good six inches before he can stop himself because he does not have those grips. This is actually a very easy thing to research as well, but it seems like a lot of people just don't even think that rabbits don't have paws that are made like cats and dogs. In fact, a rabbit's entire paw is different than a cat's paw, and I see so many people drawing a rabbit foot like a cat foot, and they're very different. And I don't have a lot of great examples for this, this is actually a kind of hard thing to demonstrate. But rabbit toes are made in a very different way. They cannot sheath their claws. Their claws are always out, and they also don't have sharp claws. They have very blunt claws. So that's, that's the first major thing that I really want people to be doing better with, because nothing takes me out of immersion in a movie or a comic or a book or something more than when I read something about the rabbit's paws, and it's just so wildly inaccurate. And to be fair, before I had a rabbit, I didn't even know that they didn't have paw pads. I never even thought about that. However, as soon as I picked up a rabbit for the first time, I was like, whoa, this foot does not look anything like I thought it did. So, you know, if you ever are curious about it, maybe see if you can, I don't know, go to somewhere like, for example, um, in my area, there are farm supply stores that sell rabbits and sometimes they will actually let you handle the rabbits before purchasing them or even without purchasing them. So if you're ever curious, you can just look up pictures of rabbits or you could try to go to a farm supply store that has rabbits and ask if you could maybe take a look at them. Granted, they don't always let you, but they usually do, at least this is for my own personal experience. Or if you happen to know someone who has a pet rabbit, that's also great because those are a lot more friendly usually and are more used to being handled so that you can like pick up their feet and look at them. Now, the next major thing that I need to touch on is that rabbit ears are not convertible. I see a lot of people drawing rabbits that have lop ears, which are the long floppy ears that go down as well as the upright ears, like the ones that you, when you think bunny, you think, you know, a little bunny with ears up on top of the head, right? 
they are not convertible. Rabbits come in many different breeds and lop-eared rabbits and the ones with the upright ears, they cannot flip their ears back and forth, which means, for example, this plush rabbit that my friend gave me. I will use it as an example. This is a lop rabbit, which means the ears go down. This rabbit cannot lift its ears up to be like that. They can raise their ears, but a upright eared rabbit cannot flop its ears down in the same way that a lop rabbit can, and a lop rabbit cannot raise its ears in the same way that a different rabbit could. This isn't to say that they can't get a lot of mobility with their ears, like when a rabbit with upright ears is tired or upset or getting overly stimulated or something, they will lay their ears backwards, but they aren't going out to the side this way. Sorry, it's a little overexposed, but the lighting is funky today. Um, so a upright eared rabbit like my rabbit, Butterscotch, his ears will lay backwards and they're more up on the top of the head as opposed to a lop-eared rabbit, which the ears are more on the side of the head. So that's another thing to note, that if you're drawing a rabbit, be sure you know what kind of rabbit you're drawing and what the ears will do. Because this rabbit can't lift its ears up all the way like that. Lop rabbits also tend to have their ears more rotated a different direction. So another thing to keep in mind and be very careful about. Another thing that I see people getting wrong with rabbits is that their heads are not circles. Their heads are not spheres. Now, hares and rabbits are very genetically different and visually different, but hares are a very good way to look at this and get a better example. I have a tiny toy hair right here. You notice, like I'm not gonna focus it or anything, but you notice that the head on this is very narrow and almost like square shaped. It's a very flat head and it's a lot longer than you expect, right? So a regular rabbit's head isn't quite that thin, like a domestic rabbit that you would probably encounter in your yard or something like that. Not a domestic rabbit in your yard. Why would there? To be fair, people also release their rabbits a lot, so that's... You might find a domestic rabbit in your yard, but I mean like pet rabbits and common like North American wild rabbits, not wild hares and whatnot. But a regular rabbit's face isn't quite that narrow, but this is a very good extreme to show you that rabbit heads are not round. They're a lot more blunt on the sides and flatter than you think. and this is more like what a domestic rabbit's face shape looks like and it looks a lot more round and fluffy in my experience that's actually primarily fur and if you gently press your hand to the side of the rabbit's cheek unless it's an overweight or very rotund little rabbit that's usually just really thick fur and their skull is a lot smaller than you think it is so their heads are not circles, and also note how the ears attach to the head. Let's focus on that real quick. Um, the ears are a lot thicker attaching to the head than you think. And the Schleich brand figurines, I really like these because they tend to be very accurate to an actual animal. So this is a really good example. The ears do not connect in the middle. They also do not connect at like a hair's width. I see a lot of people drawing rabbits that their ears just barely even connect to their head. Sometimes this is a stylistic choice, but I see people trying to do more realistic rabbits that fall into this pitfall as well. Rabbit heads are very dynamic and they have a lot going on and I actually spent multiple weeks researching and studying them whenever I was illustrating my comic Lunar the Moon Rabbit which this here is a painted model of Lunar. Um, just because the heads are so different from what I always thought before the comic. So they have very differently oriented heads than you might suspect. They also, they do have a neck, but it's a very stocky little neck and they're so fluffy around it that it usually looks like their head just goes straight into their body. It's like 
they have the teeniest tiniest little neck but it's there because they ex they can extend it at times i also want to note that rabbit eyes are not on the front of the face they are on the side of the head and this is also a good example to use for the hair when looking at the hair dead on you can't see the eyes as well they are more on the side of the face they are slightly angled forward but they are not straightforward like a person's eyes are. That is something that really strays into Uncanny Valley is when you draw your rabbits with like human facial proportions somehow. I definitely encourage if you're planning on drawing rabbits a lot or something, getting a small physically accurate model of the breed that you're planning on drawing or models of multiple different kinds of breeds because that can be really helpful for diverse stories as well. So get a load of the eyes there. They look like they're more forward on the head and this model, admittedly, it's slightly lopsided, but let's just focus on that one side right there. So looking straight at the camera, the eye is more on the side of the face. It's not dead front. Next, we will talk about rabbit tails. The tail is something that I see people sort of assuming it's just a little puff ball that comes off the back side of the rabbit, right? Incorrect. There is actually a physical tail underneath that. And I will once again reference the hair because this model shows it better. The tail comes out from under and it goes slightly up. There is a lot more fur on the tail and it's a lot more downy and light and fluffy, but there is a physical tail underneath there. And if you have a really mild-mannered rabbit, sometimes you can actually touch the tail and say, oh, yep, yeah, that's not what I thought it was. It's not just a little cotton ball. They look like them sometimes, I'll give you that. But there is a physical, fleshy little tail stump under there. I will reiterate this again. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but rabbits aren't shaped like cats. Rabbits are shaped like rabbits. There are some physical similarities but don't try to draw a rabbit like a cat because that's going to look really wrong. On that note, rabbit noses are different than cat noses. They are actually more underneath than on the front. This is kind of weird to do. I usually simplify them by just doing a simple little V shape, like a shallow V shape for the nose and then a line going down from it. But you know, there's also usually slightly visible nostrils under the edge of that V. So that's another thing that you can really only notice when you research rabbits themselves. And it can be different from rabbit to rabbit. Some have more visible noses, some have really hidden ones. So it all just depends because every breed looks different and every rabbit within that breed will have certain little quirks and differences. Now we're going to just talk about some rabbit facts and information that I see tossed around, usually inaccurately, but you know, we'll just try to clear up some of that. I won't be able to hit on everything, and as I think of more information that I maybe wasn't able to fit in this video or even didn't know, because I don't advertise myself as like a 100% I know everything about rabbits kind of person. This is just from my own learnings, research, and experience having my own rabbit and studying them extensively for a graphic novel. They're also one of my favorite animals, so I love learning about them. This isn't to say that everything in this video will be 100% correct. This is from my findings, and if I say something wrong, I apologize. I'm doing everything to the best of my ability. I'm only human. This one is like on Pinterest, you will see a lot of pictures of rabbits turned upside down belly up. This is a bad idea because rabbits don't actually like being handled most of the time. Some rabbits do and some are fine with it, but the majority of rabbits prefer to have their feet on the ground because like I said earlier, they're a prey animal, which means that they are going to want to be on the ground so that they can flee if there's a threat or anything and they just feel safer on the ground. So most rabbits don't like being picked up and handled and they especially should not be turned onto their back belly up because this can affect their vascular system and heart function and it can also stress them out extensively. 
it's just generally not a good idea to do because you can actually kill rabbits by doing this if it really upsets the rabbit. Some rabbits they'll be fine after you do it, but you shouldn't try it because you don't know how your rabbit's going to respond and you don't know if your rabbit's going to be okay. So don't turn rabbits upside down. That's dangerous for the rabbit and we love rabbits. Let's not be hurting them. It's kind of like when you see frogs that are sit up like people. That's dangerous and kills or hurts the frog. So let's learn about proper animal handling. Yay! <laughs> Next up, let's touch on the fact that rabbits don't hibernate. Um, you see a lot of like children's books and cute illustrations of rabbits sleeping in the winter. Rabbits don't hibernate because they actually have a really fast metabolism and stuff and they just, their body isn't made to stay sleeping all winter. They can't go dormant like that. So in my neck of the woods, um, in the winter time sometimes, in the snow, you'll see little brown hairs scattering around the yard and eating grass out from under the snow. It's really cute. And sometimes if you're lucky, you will get to see a little rabbit in the winter time because they don't hibernate. And this is something that I found when I was researching topics for this video. I just went to a search engine and typed in do rabbits to see what all of the autofill suggestions were. And I was really disappointed to see this one because this seems like common sense. Rabbits are mammals, which means rabbits do not lay eggs. This has been Googled enough times that this was an autofill reaction, like, to autofill thing. So, <sighs> rabbits are mammals, guys. They don't lay eggs. They give birth to living offspring. <laughs> this is also something that I just feel like it would be pretty straightforward to know. But at the same time, if you've never had a rabbit, hey, wouldn't know, I guess. Also, they are not rodents. They used to be classified as rodents. So if you're from, you know, a few centuries back, I can understand thinking that rabbits are rodents. However, they were found to have enough differences from the rest of rodents that they got classified in their own genus of lagomorph. So rabbits are lagomorphs, not rodents. So if you're going to say, ah, oh, yeah, this little rodent, that is factually inaccurate. This is a lagomorph. For rabbit diets, I see a lot of people assuming that rabbits love carrots. Most rabbits don't love carrots, especially not the orange part of the carrot. They like carrot stems and leaves more than they like the actual root of the carrot. This was popularized by Bugs Bunny, I believe, which it was supposed to be a reference to someone else. According to my research, This, there are a lot of different sources that say why people think rabbits like carrots, but the most popular one that people like to throw around is that Bugs Bunny was doing a celebrity impression and was chewing the carrot, and this celebrity impression got sort of lost in modern pop culture, so people just assumed, hey, he's a rabbit, he's eating a carrot. He loves carrots because he's a rabbit. But no, rabbits don't actually love the orange part of carrot and you can feed those to them but you should feed them in light moderation because they are rich in a lot of minerals that can actually clog up a rabbit's digestive system if fed too many. Rabbits actually seem to prefer banana over carrot. They go absolutely hog wild for banana and you can give them banana but only really like one piece every week or so very light moderation, but my rabbit, personally, he will, like, tackle me if I have banana, and I know quite a few people who have given banana to their rabbits, and it seems to be one of the most popular things among the lagomorph community. So if you're looking for a treat for your rabbit, try giving it a little piece of fresh banana. It might like it. Be sure when feeding things to your rabbit to research them extensively because rabbits can't actually eat a lot of stuff that you would think they can. So just be sure that you're researching what's safe for them because they have very delicate little tummies and the slightest thing can set them off on a health issue. So just be very careful and mindful. Now we're gonna talk about some rabbit appearances and depictions in media and whatnot and what media and entertainment has gotten them right and what has gotten them wrong. 
I wanted to talk about Judy from Zootopia first because I feel like in more recent fiction and whatnot, she seems to be a more notable example. I know th she's more anthropomorphized or whatever, but she's an okay example to look at because she has the proper paws, meaning she doesn't have paw pads. Her paws, however, are more like human fingers than rabbit paws because it's an animated movie and she is now a biped. <laughs> because Disney! So she got it right in the paw department because she didn't have toe pads, but she did, however, have a few issues. Like I noticed that her ears were convertible for some reason and sometimes she would have them like all the way down and she wasn't a lop rabbit. So that didn't entirely make sense. But there were some details about her that I felt like were pretty well done. The carrot farm, like I just talked about, that doesn't make sense because they don't really eat carrots. So if they're eating just the greens off the carrots, yeah, that makes sense. But you know, next, here's an example of some not so good funny representation in media. Um, there is the Glen Keane Netflix film Over the Moon, which I, I thought that it was a very cute movie. It definitely had its pitfalls and whatnot, but overall I felt like the beginning and the end of the movie were very strong and very heartfelt. But this isn't a review for the movie, this is a review for Bungie. Bungie was adorable and sweet, but Bungie fell into the pitfall that she had paw pads. If you're spending all the time as an animator doing live action research for your subject, like I assume the crew for this film was, why does she have paw pads? Because I feel like that would be something that if you even handled a live real rabbit for reference even once, I feel like that would immediately stick out to you. And yet, it didn't, apparently, for the crew of the film. My sister raised the point that maybe it's because people expect people to put paw pads on rabbits, and even if it's not factually correct, maybe it just ups the cute factor or something and adds detail to the foot and visual interest. However, it's not accurate, and if your rabbit has showing paw pads, it probably means it has like an infection in its foot and you need to take it to the vet. I thought that she moved pretty like a real rabbit. Um, there were a couple times where, you know, suspension of disbelief and all that jazz. It's an animated rabbit. There's a reason they're making it animated instead of live action. She is a cartoon rabbit. So I will give them benefit of the doubt and suspension of disbelief and credit where it is due. The rendering for the rabbit was beautiful. The fur all seemed to go the proper directions and whatnot, but her anatomy wasn't always spot on and it was definitely the paw pads. Similarly, Thumper from Disney's Bambi, that was a rabbit who moved pretty, pretty well. I haven't seen Bambi in a hot minute, so I can't say for sure if they got everything correct, but Thumper as well had very sizable paw pads and this is a bit interesting to look at because I feel like most people when drawing cartoon rabbits reference Thumper and think of Thumper right away and Thumper is not actually the best example to look at because of the feet. The feet are not accurate. Bugs Bunny is yet again an anthropomorphized, I keep saying anthropomorphized, anthropomorphized? I don't, I don't know how to actually articulate that word. I'm sorry. Bugs Bunny is an anthropomorphic rabbit and he, we're not gonna get into him here because he's just so far distorted and different from a real rabbit that I feel like you can't even compare him to a real rabbit. Um, but he's gonna, he's gonna get like a, a C minus or something for accuracy. I don't know, but he's a cartoon like a really hyper distorted cartoon, so he doesn't really count here. Here's a really good example of rabbit handling in live action, however. I'm sure you've maybe heard of Mr. T. He's a cool dude, right? 
So in the late 80s and early 90s, he was in the show TNT, and I really enjoy this show. Um, if you're watching this in a time where this is relevant, um, you can actually watch the show for free on Nelvana's YouTube channel, Retro Rerun, and I will link that down below because I really, I recommend this show. It's got a little bit of mild language and some violence and heavier themes, but all things considered, it's pretty clean and I really enjoy it. In one of the episodes, I will link the specific episode down below and say it right here because I cannot remember what the episode number was, like season number and title, so that'll be right here. Um, but in the episode, the villains had a rabbit, and this was one of the most well-handled rabbits I have ever seen in live-action media. It was properly cared for, they didn't lift it all the time, and when they did lift it, they held it very close to their bodies, and it was very secure, and the rabbit looked very calm and well taken care of. The rabbit was also let to free roam the house. Albeit, a lot of the flooring in the house was hardwood or concrete or other smooth, slippery surfaces, but the rabbit seemed to negotiate it very well and it was a well-kept rabbit. And just every time someone handled the rabbit, it was done right. And it boggles my mind that this show from, I believe the episode probably came out in, I want to say, like the very late 80s, um, this show did rabbit handling the most right out of anything I've ever seen, and that just blows my mind for some reason. The rabbit was very well taken care of and was the star of this episode, I gotta be real. Now, another example of live action rabbit handling is the film Secret of Moonacre, which this is like a guilty pleasure film for me because as a writer I know that the film doesn't have the best writing and it has a lot of plot holes, but it's a cute film and I enjoy it. The rabbit in this film is not handled correctly, and I feel like the rabbit is shown carried in some really odd ways and not correctly. Plus it's just handled so much. It's not great. The rabbit should really be left on the floor. You know, it's a fantasy film, so what little girl doesn't dream of living in a majestic country mansion, castle, with a beautiful rabbit. <laughs> there are tons more examples that I haven't looked at yet, and admittedly rabbits aren't in the media as much as you might think that they are. It seems like you see them all the time, but it's really just a lot of pop culture just doing the same thing over and over again. So if you can think of any cool rabbit features in movies or television or comic books even, my wheelhouse, I would love to take a look at them. So comment those down below and I might do a follow-up video talking about other rabbits in media and sort of reacting to how they're handled and taken care of. In my own work, I try to usually depict proper rabbit care, like not putting them in wire bottom kennels and things like that and not carrying them so much, but with my main project involving rabbits, Lunar the Moon Rabbit, I couldn't really avoid some of that because I wanted to show people just letting the rabbits hop around doing their thing, but at the same time I had to be realistic in the fact that Lan, she doesn't know how to properly handle a rabbit, she's never handled a rabbit before. So there are a couple scenes where she picks up rabbits and doesn't necessarily do it correctly. But Lunar is a magical space rabbit, so <laughs> she's, she's fine. But I don't want people to take the handling depicted in my graphic novel as 100% this is how you handle a rabbit, because it's really not. And I definitely made some mistakes on rabbit care and whatnot when doing this, but you know, this was written primarily before I had actually done a lot of this research, and I do regret that a bit. That's one of my main regrets with the series, is that it was not as well researched as I would have liked. But I'm still very happy with how it came out, and I think it's still a pretty good story. So these are just some fun little facts and information, and hopefully they are helpful. And hopefully this will level up your writing and illustrating game and this will just help you out a lot. Because the main reason I want to make this is so that people are able to make more accurate rabbits in media. Because they're one of my favorite animals, like I've said, 
and I just want to see them more. And I think that's a major pitfall that people fall into is that they want to include rabbits but they don't necessarily know how, so they don't. <laughs> but if you need a sign to include a rabbit in your series, this is it. Do it. And make sure you do lots of research and if you're drawing your series, get yourself a little model of the breed that you're planning on drawing a lot or research the rabbit extensively on online search engines and whatnot because most of the information that you will need is easily accessible online and it doesn't hurt to do research. Again, I just, I really hope that this is helpful and if you want to check out my graphic novel Lunar the Moon Rabbit, I will link it down below. You can get the ebook on my Gumroad store for about 10, 11 bucks, something like that. And then you can get the printed book on Amazon and it should be available on any Amazon wherever you're located. So it's only in English though. So just a note of that, although this entire video was in English, so I'm not sure why I'm noting that. That's all for now, I guess. And thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. God bless and take care.